Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, as we were planning this institute, we thought a lot about the balance between listening and engaging as a, a community. And so we wanted to frame the event with Anne and Judy's comments. And I think they did a wonderful job giving you kind of a history of, of our th um, the thinking in this profession on liaison work, but also the, sort of the, the catalyst for getting this together. We've all noticed over the last few months or even year, a lot of discussion at conferences about liaison work. And um, we were excited by the prospect of bringing you all together here to think through that with us. So the next activity is really our chance to pick your great brains to hear some of the, your thoughts about the future of this work. And um, I'm wondering how many of you have had a chance to read these scenarios? Most of you, good, excellent. And they all should be on your table, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the, the reason for these scenarios are really to get you thinking a little bit outside of the box. And the idea is that these are possible futures. These are not definite futures. Um, I don't want you to think this was administrators coming together saying this is the future of liaison work. Um, oh, thank you. Uh, so we just we put together some possible futures, and I thought we'd walk through what they are and then actually um, talk about what we'd like you guys to do for the next hour. So. Um, the beginning of this is just a sort of uh, kind of summary of where we are, and I think Anne covered this really nicely in the, the, the fact that the higher education and library landscape is changing dramatically. And um, with that is our need to respond to that and to really make sure that we're engaging our communities in the way that's most effective. And so we pr have these scenarios, and what we want you all to do, you're in groups at tables, and we're gonna have for an hour, you discuss all four scenarios. So you're not just assigned one scenario, but to actually walk through all four, take some notes, and think about someone at your table who could be a spokesperson. You can do this sort of collaboratively, but think of someone who might be your note taker, um, who will be able to relay this back. You'll see in the agenda, we, um, we'll take a break after this uh, hour, and then we'll have you do a kind of report back so we can engage as a group on, on the scenarios. But what we want you to think about is, if these scenarios are to happen, um, how do, how do you as an individual prepare for that future? And many of you know we've got a lot of sort of training programs, we've heard reskilling, we've heard these kinds of ideas about how one prepares for um, the future of their work in libraries. So we want you to kind of think about that. If these are gonna come true, how do we get from here to there? Um, very importantly, what do you need from your library management for this future? What kind of support do you need? What kind of resources? Um, I think often we are uh, in libraries are um, expected to do things and aren't always resourced to do them. Think through what you would actually need. This is hugely helpful for us as, as we think about this. Um, what would this fu future change, or how would this future change your relationships with faculty? with um, administrators and with colleagues. And I think for this particular question, it's really helpful to think about Anne's notion of outside-in approach, where we would really like you to all um, think about the larger campus context in which you're operating. I think we have a tendency in libraries to think about um, what we do for our communities, um, or, or the types of things we, you know, we do reference, we do instruction, the things that we do, but we want you to, to, to think a little bit about sort of the impacts you're making and how that fits into the larger ecosystem in which you're operating. That could be higher ed, or that could be your larger campus community. What, what are your provost's priorities? What are your dean's priorities? How do you begin to think about what you're doing as impacting and supporting those priorities? Um, and then finally is the question of, is this a plausible future? And by this question, we don't want you to debate the sort of merits of these scenarios is, it, it, like, and spend a lot of time saying, oh, this could never possibly happen, but more, is this plausible or do you see other possible futures that could result um, in, in, in our future? So just to kind of go through each one briefly, scenario one is really about um, thinking of, of sort of teams partnering in new ways. So in the future, disciplinary expertise among liaisons will be the exception rather than the rule. That this, this is really to focus on um, what Judy mentioned in the Toronto report uh, about sort of teams or teaming, which is, was a new concept to me, this notion of forming teams um, in an ad hoc way to support particular priorities or, st or strategic things in a library. So this is really about, rather than the sort of lone subject expert out there with their, their community, um, but really thinking about how might we work as teams um, and liaisons really partnering with faculty in new areas such as digital scholarship and research and data management. 
Scenario two, this one might, is, is maybe a little bit more confusing. Um, this is really about unbundling this, um, this, the, the notion of support at a single institution and address this. Too cool would be an example of this. This idea that um, support doesn't just happen in one particular place, but that you might work with colleagues across institutions. You also might want to think of this scenario from the perspective of um, how faculty think. So faculty's primary affiliation is often not their institution. Their affinity group is often their scholarly society. So thinking broadly like that, as a faculty member might be more aligned with that modern language association than their home institution. How do we tap into that kind of thinking when we're, we're doing liaison work? Uh, the third scenario is really focused on the teaching process um, and the idea of how we integrate and, and support teaching and learning on campus. Um, when reading these scenarios, I'm imagining that all of you had reactions to them in different ways. Some may have felt more threatening than others. Full disclosure, this was most threatening to me. I love teaching. I think one-shot sessions are great. Um, it's one of the reasons I went into librarianship is I love teaching. So this got me out of my comfort zone to think about this. But that's good. We want you to sort of lean into that discomfort a little bit on the scenarios and, and think about um, how this, this could be a positive thing. So as you read further in this scenario, um, it's really about more deeply embedding in the teaching and learning process and actually starting to think about things like learning analytics and how the library actually knows a lot about learners and can, um, it can uh, sort of help the faculty on campus think through that. And then finally, our shortest and sweetest one is really um, it, all liaison work will begin with outreach. And many of you may already feel that you're, that is what you're doing. But really think about that. If, if you start from a place of outreach, I think this again calls for that outside-in approach. Then you, you'll, you'll be thinking a little bit, I think, in, in different ways about the work you're doing. So for the next hour, you're going to work in groups, take some notes, use Twitter, um, use shared Google Docs, whatever you want to do. Uh, but really just think about how we're going to do a report back on this and, um, and, and, and really share with the group what we're thinking. Is that it? The flip charts, I guess they could yes. do. Yeah, maybe that's a that's probably a good idea because then we can put them up around. Thank you. I was going totally digital. Let's stick with some analog meth methods here and do the do the um the the post its.